Hey, Coops, it's going to be an intriguing week. Watching how Wayne Bennett um, gets under the skin of Kevy and the Broncos, I'll tell you what, he's a genius at doing it. I mean, you go back to 91, 92, 93. Th those sides, particularly 92, 93, when they beat the St George sides, how he got, used to get under Brian That's Smith's good. skin. Yeah and just work away at him. That bubbled along for a few years. What's some examples? How did he do that for, to Brian Smith, particularly because they couldn't get near the Broncos in those two years? No. No, I, I, it was just, just, he would just little remarks that, you know, that people tell me that would be in the paper and then Smith yeah. would sort of change his focus towards Wayne. It was all these little shenanigans that are going behind the scenes. But where, and then he moved on, like, you know, you're all, like, you know, mm. like Craig Bellamy. Yep. Like, I remember when you blokes were playing, every time that you blokes beat Brisbane, Wayne would go to the press conference and all he'd talk about was the wrestling. wrestling. Techniques. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Craig was, like, beside himself saying, right, like, I, he won't give me yeah. credit. Yeah, the, the funniest part is, is there's examples of it working for Wayne and there's examples of it not working because... I remember a number of times that just made Craig Bellamy furious and would double down on certain things and would go out there breathing fire mm. and got them a couple of times. But ultimately the grand final, that's 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 where you yeah. win and lose things and he got got, got it done. Got it done. Even guys like uh, Warren Ryan and, and Phil Gould, like I remember like seeing him do interviews, yep. reading it in print, reading it in magazines, talking about his Broncos sites, going, oh, I'm not interested in playing Wazza Ball or Gus Ball. Yep. Sort of talking about defence-minded coaching compared to his side that was good for the game. And then... Um, Most recently, Seabold. Seabs. Yeah, like, how hard is it to go in after Wayne to Brisbane in particular? Because Jason Demetri at South has done a tremendous job. But yep. You would have thought at the end of, what was that, 2018, yep. Broncos were where they were. Seabold was where he was in his coaching career. It looked like a good fit, but ultimately that presence of Wayne or the, the shadow of Wayne played a, a pretty important part. And, and the thing about Wayne is, Wayne's greatest strength is being able to rub up against a player or an individual and knowing them, knowing how they tick, mm. knowing how to flick the switch, but also... Like with a coach and saying, I know how, <laughs> I know how to just hit the nerve there. And I mean, Kevy, yeah. they're like family. They're that close. Yes. He knows Kevy probably as well as Kevy knows Kevy. So who do you think's got the advantage right now? Do you think Wayne's sitting there yeah. going, oh, I've got this covered? Or do you think oh, Kevy's? I like I, I always think sometimes with Wayne in press conferences, there's questions that that go to Wayne that I reckon he's gone to Juno just ask me this. Ask this so one of the ones was, oh, mate, a lot of pressure coming up this week. Pressure? <laughs> no pressure on us. No pressure on us. So yeah, it's yeah. all about the Broncos. Yeah. It's all about Kev. Yeah. Uh, and, and the hardest thing, like the thing about with Wayne is for Wayne it's just a game. You know, it, for him it's just part of the game. Yeah. Where other coaches, though, it just, it just works on so yeah. many of them. And it's almost... I don't want to over-exaggerate this, but it's almost the biggest test of Kevy's coaching career this week, right? Because on paper, player for player, strength for strength, the Broncos are set. They're way more powerful, way more X-factor, skill through the roof. They should get it done. But one thing that cannot be sort of crossed over this week for the Broncos in particular is too much emotion. Yeah. And Kevy's greatest strength and weakness could be too much emotion because he does it really well. If he goes too hard on the, we are yeah. the Broncos, this is yeah. our town, we are the big dogs, we don't let anyone in, and all of a sudden they don't get an even share of statistics, the game, possession, ball, errors, missed tackles, that brings the Dolphins into play because we've seen what they've been able to do in the first three games. They drag people down, yep. hold them down, and when they opposition make an error, the Dolphins attack. And, mm, that's it. and that's the strength of the Dolphins, yes. is that they, they, they are acutely aware of what, how they need to play and what they need to do to win. Yep. Like, they, they haven't got an identity crisis where they think they're a certain type. They know exactly who they are. Yep. You know, high, high ball retention. Yep. They make the most of, most of every possession they've got. They're not frivolous with the football. Yep. They, and, and, and to get to that, uh, and, and sorry, double down on that, is their style, how they play. They play very p patient, but they drill through the middle. Mm -hmm. You see when there's nothing on, Sean O'Sullivan just pick a player up in the inside. The opposition middles are just making, they don't breathe. Yeah. They're just put under pressure the whole time. And, and then if you, and, and how that works, of course, is they just bit by bit, 
just grind the opposition down. I've got no doubt that Wayne, part of his plan every week is to say, boys, let's play a style that with 10 minutes to go, we're in the contest. Yep. And the three victories, they're three from three. In each of those games, the opposition has fell apart in the last 10 minutes and they've come over the top. And that's why I say the Broncos need to have even share. If they have even share in most of the stats, they can win this game and win it comfortably. But if that overcoached emotion comes into play and they start beating their chest and start dropping the ball and trying to you know, win everything and you know, really double down on the, the attachment yeah. to winning this game, then maybe that's where the Dolphins just hover, hover, hover consistent and then the games in the balance yeah. would tend to go and it could be anyone's. And that's the thing, isn't it? Like, you look at the attack that the Broncos have got. But like you said, the emotion of the occasion. And yeah, self coop when you go out into a big game, big crowd, adrenaline's pumping, when you're a young playmaker, it's hard to con control that. Yeah. And you want to push... How it manifests itself, you find yourself pushing the ball from sideline to yeah. sideline. And one thing you know about the Dolphins is they're just going to hang in there. And the last thing the Broncos want is to be pushing the ball around, wasting unnecessary energy on their attack and look after, after 30 minutes and it's nil all. Yep. They're, so I, I mean, they're in trouble. See, I would be going punch for punch with the Dolphins if I'm the Broncos. Because, yes, they play a little bit more expansive, but they should back themselves. But I like that Payne Haas and Patrick Carrigan's in the meat of the Broncos um, forward pack because they can absorb a lot of pressure, play for long minutes... And that's their trump card in this game. Mm. Those two guys on the field doing what they do for long minutes will repel the Dolphins for me. And the other thing about the two coops, we spoke about Nathan Cleary last week, that if Penrith just play a power game and use his kicking, yep. they're going to win 80 90% of their games. Well, use Reynolds' kicking game. What, well, what on the weekend, weekend, right, so Reynolds is kicking. So six kicks in the first half. Yep. The first four kicks, he gets a repeat set, Puts up a towering bomb, which they score off, but gets taken away for a mild interference. Gets another repeat set, then kicks for a try. For the, the other two kicks, he duffs one, gets in position late. They don't set for a kick, duffs that one, but then does the two-point yep. field goal. Second half, repeat set and a try. When, he is, when they build a set towards play five and six, things happen. And to that point, he, you know, I think it was two early kicks for two tries, right? And then I think it was a Selwyn Cobo try. Fifth play, runs down to the right-hand side, fakes the kick. They all fold and he's going, he's just toying with them. He's playing with them. He goes and plays out the back. They stripped them. Selwyn Cobo ends yeah. up scoring. So you know that Adam Reynolds is in the sweet spot when he's dictating terms with his king game. Early, he'll play high percentage kicks, long into the 10 by 10 box near the try line for the opposition. And as he starts feeling the game swinging in momentum, a repeat set. Mm. And then normally off the back of that, that's when he goes for the uh, artillery. He goes for an early kick for you know, Tony Staggs has scored a couple. Yep. Um, yeah, Kurt Catewell does as well. But then after he's been successful with the early kick, he'll fake it and then play at the back to Reese Walsh and do his thing. What about Walsh? Ooh. Playing good. Playing, he's brought back some of that old Broncos swagger. <laughs> I say to people all the time, you play the Broncos, even the blokes who were... Even the kid who was bringing the kicking tee out or bringing yeah. the sand out, the sand boy thought he was better than you. And, yeah. mate, the, the blokes who were do, doing the water and they all thought they were better. It was just their swagger. And, and it was interesting, Coop. So early... So if you look at the early days of the Broncos, they were all swagger and they lacked steel. So what Wayne does, he brings Gilmeister in in 91. Mm hmm Starts to really shore him up. Then the second year doubles down on that and he brings in Lazo. So steel and on top of that guaranteed meterage. Well, if you look, watch the Broncos the last few years, they've got good meterage. Yeah. Yeah, their, their pack has been superb. Yeah. What they've lacked is that real arrogance and swagger. Mm -hmm. And so they've brought Walsh in, who's given them a bit of that swagger and that attacking, attacking teeth. And it'd be interesting. And this is a bit of the emotion part because Swagger can be really good in high performance games because he's got this rare ability, Walsh, to be all in on a play and it's beautiful to watch. But I sit there and go, what are you doing? But then if it doesn't come off, you go, well, you're under pressure now yeah. for the next 10 minutes. So he is a reflection of what the Broncos probably need to get right this week. He probably needs to sit just below that red line. Mm. And when the game's there, go for it. But just don't make sure he fires up too early because he could be the the reason why they win and the reason they don't because he's probably going too risky, too much swagger in a big mm. game to dominate Brisbane as a one-team town. But if he sits just below there, 
for 65 minutes and then hits the gas at some stage, he could be the guy that breaks it open. People ask you, so who, who do you think is going to win? And when you look at the way the two sides are playing, you go, well, you think the Broncos. But how many of these type games does Wayne lose? Yep. yep. I remember taking that, those St George, yep. St George Illawarra sides up there, rank outsiders yep. and finding a way to win. Quite seriously, there is a lot of pressure on the Broncos. Yep, there is. Right? They're the big brother. They're, they're marking their territory, right? Yep. And they're the clear favourites. Yep. They've been three from three. People are really starting to talk them up. But yep. whether they buy into it or not, there is a lot of emotion around this game. Yep. There's a lot up for grabs. Nothing could burst their balloon at the moment yep. like losing this game. You talk the about Dolphins. the arrogance, the swagger and should win and all that. If they didn't have Adam Reynolds in this contest, I'd be really worried because that arrogance and swagger might get too much. Mm -hmm. But Adam Reynolds, the old wily cat, it's not his first rodeo and he knows mm. exactly how Wayne coaches and I think he is a very good foil this week because you saw against the Dragons, they looked like they were distracted in the first half against the Dragons. They looked like they had an eye on Friday night. Got into half time and Kevy actually said, you know, Reynolds you know, said a lot during half time, brought us back, focused on the things they did. And for, what was it, 70 minutes, it was 18 all. And they went bang, bang, four tries and blew yeah. the game wide open. So mm. I think uh, if there was no Adam Reynolds, I'd be super worried about the Broncos being able to handle this whole week. It's like grand final. It's like a little bit like origin, isn't it? It is. But Adam Reynolds has done it before and knows what it takes. Let's see.